Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM and I'm back at the Model Railway Board so it must mean that it's in time for another episode of Laurie Goes A Little Loco. And if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment, then the links to our social media is coming up on the screen now. And that includes the link to our Teespring shop where you can buy merchandise to help support the channel and just show people that you like it. So if you cast your minds way, way back to, I think possibly the second episode of Laurie Goes a Little Loco, we uncovered this, which is a Backman B1. And well, it didn't run very well. And I don't think actually, if I put it on the track, that it continues to run very well. So if I just send it off in a that way direction, well, it's pretty lumpy, isn't it? That, that's very awful. It's pretty, almost unusably bad. That it is unusably bad. So, oh, it's hopped off the rails there. So there is obviously a problem with this. Number one amongst that is it doesn't have a tender, but fear no more for I have fixed that. Wrapped up here, is a early crest Backman tender. And if we do that, wonderful. We put the two together and this completes the model. So for the first time ever, Viscount Ridley is a complete locomotive again. So the plan for today is to strip down this thing and just see what's wrong with it. Now, a couple of you have said, oh, it's a main line. I'm pretty sure it's a Backman because it says so under here that it's a Backman. So I've got my, one of my Christmas presents, a little mini thing here with many different bits in it. So we'll turn it upside down and we're going to start disassembling the bottom end of this, which if memory serves is a pain. So we'll get one of these cross bits. Now I love the fact that um, we've started modeling on model railways, things like the, uh, the brake reading but it does mean that getting to things to service them becomes a lot more difficult. So we're going to take the, the base plate off this one, like so, undoing the, the screws here. I've just dropped into the motion. Gone. And the rear one, well, we've dropped off the rear one. There we are. And revealing that it is indeed a Backman model. Because we have the Backman motor rather than the mainline one. So that's our first thing. So I think I'm gonna to have to pop the bottom off really to get any more of an idea. So that means undoing this final screw here, which means, yep, I'm plugging the brake rigging, which is now completely off. So we'll just pop it out here as well, like so. That's the brake rigging out. So at least we can now access this part a bit easier and we'll be able to see if it is indeed backman split chassis problem out oh, you come now you come come on and if it's the axles that have fallen apart so we'll keep these two together because they're the two for that and then this one holds the end on so we can now lift this entire plate off like so which reveals are inside motion and we can now just quite simply if we move that out of the way I'll move that as well so you can see this will all just pop loose uh, I think we found our problem is that this front wheel here is tight these ones all just drop out but this one should lift out as well with my so that's probably where I'll put over here that's out so is there a yes and there indeed is our problem this front one here, if I carefully, oh, a bit not careful enough, carefully prise this apart, we will see that the axle here has cracked. He says, desperately trying to get it apart without breaking it. You can just about see. 
so that's why this is running lumpy. And so I guess what could be done about this is it, oh, it's limited. I'm going to see if we can find spares which are hard enough to get by. Come on, off you come. Don't want to break the rods. Oh. Or we can try gluing it up, which is possibly what's been done to this already because it is very difficult to get off. Let's try using the flathead time and see if we can prise that off. Oh well. And this is the main reason why Backman has moved away. Oh dear, that's been glued. Oh, that's gonna make it a lot more difficult to fix. Yeah, this is why Backman have moved away from this because it fails on, ah, there we go, that felt good. There we go, so drop that out. And here is our problem. So it's split in a couple of places. Yes. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, uh, one of the things I featured many times on the channel are the older locomotives in my collection, which are still running strong. Uh, you look at these more modern super detail thing, you have to wonder how many of them are still going to be running in the future in the same way that, you know, I can just go get one of the triangle locos out and it will just trundle around the track quite happily. So onto the internet we go and see if we can get a replacement. If not, it will be make plan B. Mm. where I found these. Some time has now passed and I now have these. Yes, these are the replacement 3D printed parts for, well, whatever these broken ones are. Now, in this set from 3D Design and Printing uh, Assisted, that's who they are, assisted. They're the guys who printed these new ones. And they were available for a relatively, uh, what I thought was quite a fair fee on eBay. Uh, that one's not so good, admittedly. That's got bumps in it. But let's just drop them in and see if they seem like they'll fit and turn out okay. Well, yeah, I guess. I can't, I can't see any issues, potential issues with that, I mean, Got a couple of lumps on it with my knife. No, I won't use the knife. We'll use a file because we're intelligent. Just file off those kind of imperfections. So those are the replacements for them. But the other thing I want to test is the potential. If I get my... Is this one here still feels tight. As the wheel drops in and out of that, it still feels there. Like that's tight and the same on this side and I don't think they should be so I'm going to just take the file again go through here and just give that a bit of a, a little bit of work on the inside because I just it doesn't feel right to me now this may now give it too much play and make it wobble but you know I'm well up for giving this the try. So, hopefully with that, that will improve things. Just a little bit taken off there. Oh, now I can't remember which way around any of this goes. So that's all going to be a challenge and a half. But what I wanted to do before we went much further, so I'm just going to rest that like that, is if I grab my two crop clips from behind me, and connect it down here to the track. Just wanted to see if the motor's actually going to be of any good. So all we've got to do is tap the two sides of the chassis. Hmm, interesting. Oh, there we go. Let's see if it's got any limping going on. Okay. That seems to be okay, doesn't it? Oh, look at that. Hmm. It's possible this has had a pronounced limp for long enough to actually upset the motor.
Yeah. That looks like that's actually running pretty well. So we'll take these off. That's the first change done. Once we've got the new axles in it, what we'll do is we'll give this a service, just a, a bit of oil just on the moving parts, just on the aim of improving it. Now, the gear wheel in the center, the main drive gear, doesn't appear to have any cracks in it. So we're just going to leave that as it is. A bit of an oil, but we'll leave that as it is. Which means it's just these ones. Now, I'm not sure if these are going to be a snug fit or if they're going to need glue, but we're going to just go assume snug fit to start off with. Oh yeah, that's definitely a snug fit. Oh wow, that's very tight. That's very tight. Right, now, now comes the important thing of working out which wheel goes where. And I think that one probably, that's the rear, that's the front. Front is, oh, how on earth did I manage to drop this out? I am very confused now. Unless they pass over each other, like... Yes, like that. Okay. Um, so now, if we stick that back there, that back there, we start getting this back to kind of lines of where it should be. Now, the important thing now is to go on the quartering. So, if we go with this one being down, we're going to set this one to be half a turn back and then push that into there and hopefully so that's at the bottom that's 90 degrees yes they're 90 degrees apart whether or not it's the correct for the model I'm not sure okay and that's back in there now whether or not I'm correct on my actual positioning of it I don't know but so we're going to set all this to that side there being the bottom and this side here being at a quarter. So that's at the bottom, that's at a quarter. Let's ask that one very nicely to drop back in, like so. That's good. That's still tight at the front, but and now once again with this one, this piece here, we'll drop it. I want to went in a lot easier. That might need some glue. And that's at a quarter. And then we'll spin that round. It's like that. That's better. Right, let's see what happens now. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh my, that's, that's, that's amazing. Go on, pick you. That's brought that straight back into life. That's exactly how that should be. Oh, that's brilliant. That's silky smooth. So what we're going to do now is just give it a little service. I'm going to reach around here for my service items. Oh, that's wonderfully exciting. I wasn't actually expecting this much success. I was expecting this still to have a pronounced limp. I'll get a tiny drop of oil, and we're just going to drop a tiny drop of oil onto the worm. And just down the front of it, there's a little ball that pushes on it. Just chuck a little tiny drop as well onto the spindle of the motor. Right. And what we've got in bits, and I suppose the intelligent thing is just to do the motion, isn't it? So let's do a tiniest, tiniest drop there on the bearing there, and there, and there. And then we'll put another tiny bit on there, on the big end, well not the big ends, but on the coupling rods, on the connecting rod. And we'll do the same on this side, so just on the big end here. Like so, it's important not to use too much oil because you'll just ruin it. Just to rub it on there. 
There we go. Okay, now I shouldn't need to put any oil on the actual mechanism behind it. So we'll put that there, give this a wipe. Put that back away so we're organized. Okay, so with a little bit of oil applied, we can turn this thing over. The first thing we're going to do is put the, the base plate back on it because once this is on, that's you know, basically you know, all our problems are dealt with. So we'll put that back on, stick that in there, and then swing that in. Don't want to tighten them up too much because it will just absolutely ruin the, uh, the plastic in there. It will just pull the insides out and then you do have a problem. You need to get some more tabs, which I have no idea how accessible getting new tabs are but they're, I think, the same on the mainland and, and the backman ones. Now, when reassembling a model like this, an important thing is to test it at every stage so we can test and make sure that we're happy at every stage. Oh, that's better. I see, still got a bit of a limp now. So, Something's not quite right in there. Let's have another go. Just yeah, something's not one hundred percent happy. Now that might, however, be taken care of by giving it a slight running in, or let's just release the base plate slightly because it could be over tightness in that regard. Let's give it another little run. Still got a bit of a pronounced limp, but it is so much better than what it was. And just a rail going backwards. Now, what this could be, and what I'm not ruling out, let's give it a clean, is the possibility that it just now needs a running in because it's not had a good run for a very long time. Now we're going to get my tricks. A little HO cleaner out here. Pick this up. Place that on the rails and we'll just give it a run. And that will clean out the wheels. All right, once again, it's time to test this thing to make sure that it is indeed happy. Of course, with the steam engine, there's far more complexities with it. Oh yeah, I mean, it's still got a bit of a limp. But compared to how we were, I think we'll accept that. Like that might well tidy up with a bit of running. There is a limp on that, but I'm willing to give it a shot that if we just run it in and leave it running for a while, that will solve itself. So next stage is to take the little screw out here. There's a little slot on the front of the body there which goes into the little slot here. So what we have to do is line the two up and the body just slides straight over. We drop the little screw back in. Like so, and then we can do the thing back up. Now, one of the things I think I might do with this, especially if we give it a successful running in, is to actually do a bit of uh, detail work in the cab. And um, give it a crew, pick a couple of the details out. I won't put the brake rigging on in case this is a failure. But there we go. Well, it's running, that's something. So what I'm going to do now, oh, it has popped off again, but never mind. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this to run round and see if it will run in and give it that and then that will define our next step. If it's working, brilliant. If it's not, then we need to take it apart again. It very quickly became clear that the tender did not enjoy going around the sharp curves my layout, so I just let the loco go around without it. Now, 
it is running relatively well. There's definitely a noise in reverse, but compared to where we were, it's so much better. Uh, for running on a decent sized layout, which is what it's meant to be, it's not a shunting engine, it will be most suitable. Oh, oh my god, it did. It almost did a complete circuit. It did got around the bit over there. Anyway, that's beside the point. The point is that it's back together. When eventually I get myself a proper layout, haha, when that happens, I'll probably take this apart again and give it another service and just give it a good run in on some proper track as it really isn't enjoying this stuff at all. But in the meantime, it's working again. It's a lot better than it was. And that's the most important thing to take from this. It is a working engine and it's a good looking engine. And I feel very happy to have actually bought it back and got it going again, because otherwise, you know, someone would just throw it out. And so with that, that's the end of this video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it and I hope that some of you found it useful and some of you, it might spur you on to go and repair your own limping back engines. Let me know if you found it useful and let me know if I should have done something else in the comments. And in the meantime, if you have enjoyed this video, how about clicking over here for one of the other services we've done on Lorigo's Little Loco or over here for Lorigo's Loco and a video when we took out the actual Orient Express. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. It is a very pretty model.